on LNV Tutorials, I'm going to show you how to create a mixed media design grid. So to start, you'll see I have a piece of white paper here. You could use any color. Um, this is a thicker paper, kind of like illustration board, um, tag board along those lines. And it is 11 inches by 11 inches. Um, you could certainly go bigger. I don't know that I would recommend going much smaller, but that's really your preference. Um, kind of depends how many squares you are wanting to incorporate onto the design. So the idea here is that we are going to be using um, a ruler to mark out essentially how to space everything evenly. Then we're going to create a series of squares using a variety of, I have scrapbook paper. You could see the different ones that I have all in a similar kind of color scheme. I have some magazine papers that I liked uh, with images that I just thought were appealing or kind of went along with the colors I was looking for. So I just pulled some of those as well. I'm going to end up using 25 total. So to begin, I'm going to move some stuff out of my way here <laughs> and I'm going to mark off my paper lightly with pencil. I might press a little harder just for the sake of you guys seeing it, but this is again 11 by 11 inches and I'm going to mark one and one quarter of an inch in starting from the left side. That is going to give me a border. So the border all around the paper will be one and one quarter of an inch all around. So I'm proceeding to mark that down the side multiple times just to make sure that my line is really straight. Now, keep in mind that I make these tutorials not only for just the general YouTube audience, but primarily for my high school students. So sometimes when I do this stuff, you might find it a little repetitive or if some of the steps are a little unnecessary or not needed depending on the level that you are at. But again, my kind of priority audience is going to be my high school students. So that's why I'm taking extra steps here. You can see again, I'm marking one and a quarter all the way down the page. Now I'm going to turn my ruler and just line it up with the markings like this and draw a line to connect those. Might be a little hard for you to see on the screen, but it is there. So moving on, going to do the other side as well. Again, making sure that I line them up. And the reason I'm so particular about this being really precise is that the slightest little bit of being kind of out of measurement and it's gonna throw everything off. You'll be able to notice that your pieces don't line up right or they're crooked something along those lines. And I know for me and personally, that would drive me nuts. So again, I'm just continuing to do the same thing on the other two sides here. Putting the marks, the little hash marks, and then connecting them like so. And this is my last side here. You can certainly fast forward if you get the gist of it. Measuring, unfortunately, seems to be one of those things some high school, stu high school students still struggle with. So I'm kind of trying to reiterate this a little bit here. 
and connect my last line. And this is going to give me my border. There we go. Okay, so now I have a nice even one and one quarter inch or 1.25 inch border all the way around the paper. So nothing is going to go inside that space. What this means is my very first square will start in, let's say, the, the top left inside of the lines that I've created, so the inside of the box that I created. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start at the one edge of the border I created, and I'm going to mark out every, well, I shouldn't say every quarter of an inch. I'm going to mark one and a half inches, and then I'm going to leave a quarter inch space, and I'm going to mark one and a half inches again. And I'm going to do that until I reach the other border, and it should be evenly spaced out. So what this does is that it's going to give you a space for a square that is one and a half inches by one and a half inches. And then it's going to put a quarter of an inch or 0.25 inch space in between each one of those squares. So you can see I'm going through and marking these. I went through and checked it first just to make sure my measurements were correct. And I am leaving some space. So just like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom because again, I want the lines to line up. So my first mark is going to be at one and a half inches. I'm gonna leave a quarter of an inch and mark it at one and three quarters. My next one will be three and a quarter. And then to leave a quarter of an inch, I'll be at three and a half. And then I'm going to continue it just like this, okay? I'm gonna connect these lines lightly because if you don't do it lightly, what's gonna happen is when you go back, and like I said, I was doing it a little bit darker so that you guys could see on the screen, but when you're doing it, make sure that you do it lightly so that you can erase anything that's left. When you put your squares down, any lines that are remaining in the gaps in between are going to show, obviously. So you want to make sure you can go back and erase those out. Okay, so I'm still, I'm just repeating the same thing. So we've got one, lining it up here, one and a half inches, leave a quarter inch, one and a half inches, right here, leave a quarter inch, backtrack see how I got to the end and I was like what I'm thinking to myself on here what did I do wrong and now I can see as I go back after what I did wrong I just accident accidentally skipped one of the spaces so got it all measured out we're gonna move on. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to use this one and a half inch square punch, which is amazing. You can see you slide the paper in, press it down, and it makes a perfect one and a half by one and a half inch square, just like that. So again, for the tutorial, I'm going to use this. If you would like to purchase one of these, I'll include the link below like I normally do. For my students, you guys will be cutting these out. You're so lucky. You're gonna cut each square out. What I would do is measure one out to start and then use that one as a template. Another idea is just to use like a scrap piece of cardboard, cut it out and move on. 
So now that I have all of my pieces cut out, I'm going to kind of lay them out because I don't want to just start gluing them down and not know exactly if I want a piece where it is because obviously once I glue it down, it's stuck. So, or at least soon will be stuck. I want some of these darker images spread out. I want ones that are similar spread out so they're not right by each other. So I'm just going to go through, lay all these out using the grid that I drew on here as a guide. And you can see how there's a mix of patterns and some of the magazine ones have actual images on them, like the eye. There's one that has part of a bracelet on it. So I'm just kind of adjusting them. I'm going to work on this and see how I want them laid out. And I will say, you know, some of my images are not just straight blue or blue green, like the map one is kind of more that yellowy color, but it still has a little hint of the blue in it. So these don't have to be precisely a certain color. The whole overall idea of this is getting images that show some sense of unity. We used to do this in my photography class and they always had to show an element or principle of design. So they would show color or movement or emphasis, something along those lines. So let me finish this up here and when I return, I'm gonna show you how we're going to start gluing them down. Okay, now that I have them all laid out, I'm going to go through and start gluing all of the pieces into place. You can see I have them laying out. They're not perfect, but they're where I want them to go. I'm gonna use the grid that I drew out as the guide. I'm using a glue stick, mainly because I hate Elmer's glue when it comes to paper. So um, I just think it's a lot nicer to work with it. You don't have to worry about it seeping out or bubbling up. So basically I'm just going to continue going through and gluing these down using the guide that I created like so. Pretty simple from here on out. So as always, I will include links in the comments below, the description below to supplies. If you're looking for the punch, anything like that, please subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for an upcoming giveaway and more tutorials that will be coming your way over the next few weeks, finally, after a bit of a hiatus. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please give us a thumbs up and we will catch you next time on LNV Tutorials. Thanks for watching, guys.